This video is on finding the percentage difference in your values in an IB physics lab report. You do this after you've already discovered your final function and you've already linearized your data, right? Well, after linearizing the data. All right, there's my final function. So you do your experiment, independent variable, dependent variable, the average values of the dependent variable, the uncertainty, your log-log analysis. After you do the log-log analysis, you figure out what your function is. This one was power. The power was 0.7. I rounded it. You do your log-log analysis to figure that out. Then, once you know the power, you modify your independent variable values. Uh, specifically, you raise each one to the power that you discovered. Then you do the uncertainty analysis to see what's the uncertainty in those modified IV values. And now, uh, once we do that, we make a graph with dependent variable, average distance in this case, versus the modified IV values, so time to the 0.7. It's a straight line, it should be. You add your trend line to the straight line graph. You only add trend lines to uh, linear trend lines to straight graphs. Don't add a trend line to your first graph if it's not straight. Then you show the equation, and it looks something like this. Leave your equation like this. You know that when you go and you write your equation, your function, in your lab report, you replace y with the y quantity. You replace x with what's on the x-axis, time to the 0.7. Leave out units when you make that replacement. Uh, and then figure out what the units of the slope are and the units of the y-intercept. But don't write, you know, don't write d centimeters. That would be wrong. You just write d the variable. Okay, because I don't have a lab report, I'm going to actually, no, I'll just leave it like this. First, we're going to use this equation to calculate predicted values of d. Right? And you know what? I will go ahead and change it. d equals, and then here I'm going to put what's my x-axis time to the 0 0.7. Make it superscript. That's what's on my x-axis. I won't pl pl uh, plug in units right now. <clears throat> so I'm going to calculate values of d by plugging in values of time to the 0.7. So first I have 2.3879 times the first time to the 0.7. Here's the column of time to the 0.7. These are the x values. So this is what I plug in for x, time to the 0.7. And then I add 0.3285. Uh, it's a really common mistake. Many people do this. Instead of plugging in the modified IV value for x, they plug in the original IV value. And that's wrong. That will give you totally meaningless information. So you do the calculation once. Show a sample calculation of this, right? Show a sample calculation of this in your lab report. You only need to do it once for one data point. Don't show it for all 10. Then the percent difference. The percent difference is the difference between the two values. So we're going to compare the predicted d to the actual d. 3.5. How does it compare to 3? Well, they're kind of close. Percent difference quantifies how close they are. First, you get the difference between those two values. So the 3.5 minus the actual d. Then you divide by their average, the average of this and that. Uh, there's an Excel function, average. You click the first one, comma, the second function, uh, the second thing that you want to average. But because you also have to show a calculation of percentage difference in your lab report, let me show you what it would look like to get the average. You have to divide by the total number of things, which is two that you're averaging. The numerator is just the sum, like that. Be careful. Make sure you put enough parentheses around this, around the entire calculation of average. Uh, put parentheses around the whole thing, or else the divided by 2 will go in the wrong place. So you copy these down. Uh, these are percentages. Uh-oh, some of them are negative. You want them to all be positive, just like uncertainties. So let's just do absolute value. 
add our parentheses. Whoops. Copy that down. Good. That fixes it. These are percentages, but I haven't calculated them by multiplying by 100. You always multiply by 100 to change a decimal to a percentage. I don't want to go back through again and change these by multiplying by 100, so I have Excel make them percentages for me. You can round these percentages using the same rules that you do for percentage uncertainty. 2% and higher, round to the first, uh, round to the nearest whole number, 2% and lower, give it two sig figs. There's that. I am finished there. These values you can just round to a reasonable, reasonable number of sig figs. So I'll give it two to three. The percentage difference, uh, <clears throat> so what would you put in your final report? You would put these two things definitely. It would also be good to put this and this. So those four columns, you could control C, copy those four, paste them into your report. Why do we talk about percentage difference? Well, it's a measure of random error in your experiment. When values fluctuate above and below the, uh, when your data fluctuates above and below the line, that means there's random error. Sometimes they're higher, sometimes they're lower, kind of random. And the percent difference tells you how far off these data points are from your line. So they say to you, how much random error do you have? So talk about the range of these values, right? From 1.5 up to 20. 20 is kind of high. But a great thing to do is average them together and then mention what the average is in your report. You don't need to show a sample calculation of the average. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> and in general, so how do you know if your average is good? Well, if you have, you know, maybe 5 to 7% or less, that's small random error, a small amount of random error. If you have maybe, I don't know, 10 to 12%, as your average percentage difference. That's a medium amount of random error. And if your percentage difference is 15% or higher, then that's a pretty large amount of random error, getting into large territory. So it's great to mention this value and use it to conclude how much random error do you have in your experiment, in your data, rather. It's not the only thing you will use to draw this conclusion. The other thing you'll use is the percentage uncertainty in the slope, in this slope. So that's how you do percentage differences.